Phil is the son of Lieutenant Colonel Philip J. Corso and a public speaker on the subjects of ufology, carrying on the legacy of his father's work, the late Philip J. Corso. Now, Philip J. Corso was a member of President Eisenhower's National Security Council and former head of the Foreign Technology Desk at the United States Army's Research and Development Department. Now, Philip J. Corso came forward to reveal his personal stewardship of alien artifacts from the Roswell crash in his book, The Day After Roswell. Now, he tells in that book how he spearheaded the Army's reverse engineering project that led to today's integrated circuits, fiber optics and lasers, Kevlar and more. And how he spearheaded and seeded the Roswell alien technology to the giants of American industry. So enjoy my interview with Phil. Well, Phil, thank you for letting me interview you here in your home in Florida. Uh, this has been many years in the making to have this interview. I didn't, I, I didn't even think I'd be sat with you right now because um, I'd wanted to interview you, but I had no aspirations of coming to Florida right now on my journey because it was just, I've just been everywhere else. But synchronicity has aligned us where I'm here. You said yes at the last minute, and you know you you've just um, finished your latter career, um, and what was that, just to let the audience know? I ran a business for 25 years called High Speed Composites, and I built composite aircraft experimentals. And you weren't really up for talking about any of this when I first contacted you a few years That's ago. That's right. In fact, I think I almost gave you the brush off, which I apologize, but there are reasons for that. Yes. I was very busy, and it was a secondary, and there was so much stuff that went on negative that our family had just decided to enough was enough. set it aside. Yeah. So if we to sum up in a few words, what is it your dad was famous for? Well, my dad was famous for not the UFO, but for his work within the government behind the scenes. And the book was never meant to be. Uh, my dad was writing his memoirs, and I ran a small business at that time, Marine Electronics, and he would sit at the desk and take the phone calls while I'd be out working on the yachts. And sometimes it was really funny, President Reagan would call him and he'd stand at attention behind the desk. But So you had famous calls coming in? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, he was number one uh, for several presidents on uh, Russia. And like one of the KGB after the wall came down, said my father knew more about, I mean, the KGB said my father knew more about them than they did, you know. So he was many times called into action, even in his retirement. But um, the book was never meant to be, but a fella in, um, in uh, Vegas named George Knapp, my father, we got turned down 11 times on his memoir books. Nobody wanted an old soldier's memoirs. And there was one paragraph in there that said, when I was in R&D, I planted um, alien technology and such like that. So George Knapp picked up on that, and that's how the book came into being. Now, when you first saw those couple of lines in there, what did you think why Dad had put that in there? If he'd, he'd never spoken about that before? That's correct. Never. What did you think when you first saw those lines? And I was always interested in UFOs and airplanes and such like that, you know. So it, I was uh, overwhelmed. You know, I didn't believe it. Even though you had an interest in ufology when right. you were younger, you still right. didn't believe what your dad had put in there? Well, I, I, I came to a reasoning afterwards that I did believe it, and it's very simple. Uh, I had a set of photographs that I had taken in Fort Bliss of UFOs, and he, he always didn't like that. Finally took them away from me. So before the book was written, right before the book was written, uh, I was sitting with a Captain Lowsley down in Lantana Boatyard, and we were eating lunch with my father. And uh, my father, I asked him for the pictures. So he blushed it off that he had given it to General Salmon, he had given it to Gene Dixon or whatever, and they were gone. And I wanted them back. So my father gets up to go to the restroom, and David says, he was black belt, and he would read the respirations in the eye. He says, your father's went up to 180 or something, and you shouldn't ask him any more about these UFOs and such like that. So that was the first hint that maybe something, 
So when I put that together afterwards, I began believing the story. And let's just summarize it quickly just here at this moment. Your dad reversed, uh, helped to put in, into R&D departments of companies out there technology that eventually became fiber optics, Kevlar, night vision, transistor, and maybe a few other integrated things. Circuit, integrated not circuit, not transistor. Sorry, integ oh, integrated circuit. So the transistor was already around before. Exactly. And Ah, and so when this transistor was given to the right type of company, it didn't seem like it came out of the complete under extraordinary. That you know that maybe right. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. you remember the trans to cut you off for a sec before I forget. The transistor radio came out with six transistors. Well, within a three-year period, we had integrated circuits. Scientists came to our house, like Al Pudoff, Chuck Green, and them. they said, "We know better." It doesn't happen in three years. So they came to the house to understand after the book was written, how did these advancements from a laser that is as big as this room here to a pencil sized one within three years. These scientists knew that something was up. But do you, would you go along with this statement that even that technology that they've still got now, some of these companies, um, they still don't really understand what they've got? No, because if you went back to Leonardo da Vinci, and gave him a calculator watch or one of the new, wh what would he, how would he be able to use it? Even after a century later, he still wouldn't be able he to. We weren't to. ready for that. Right. So, okay. My so, father says the most important issue that they were after, anybody that even hinted that they had a, a um, path to this direction would be what he calls nuclear alignment, which nowadays we are just getting to that point now with the single strand of carbon that produces a voltage from the wave pattern, single atom. So that's what my father and General Trudeau's number one mandate was, nuclear alignment, which the extra biological suit was made out of. Um, um, just again, describe what could come from that type of technology, anything? Oh, from that type of technology, it would be revolutionary because we would have shielding and we could travel in space. As of now, my father says we cannot travel in space because of the radiation. It's lights out. And NASA is now beginning to say that by the radium-3 moon dust that they're going to put six feet around the craft. They're going to go underground on Mars and stuff. They know this and they've known it for some time. And so has the military. So once we get past the Van Halen belt, mm -hmm. is that what it's called, Van Halen? Van Allen belt. Van Allen, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. A second one was found, but they call it, friend my dad termed it as friendly space, the gravitational fields between the Earth and the moon. Once we get beyond that, lights are out. We can go to the moon as humans but not beyond that with our present technologies. We do become, you know, we, we, we you know, the degradation in, you know, bones of uh, astronauts that have spent time on the ISS. And mentally. And mentally, you know, they've done the long-term studies. I mean, what were the ramifications of the astronauts that went to the moon? I'm guessing they became, they were quite ill on the way back, maybe. Somewhere. Well, we know Edgar Mitchell. We met him quite well. And he had an epiphany, he called it, on re-entering right. the Earth. And... Kundalini, was it? And... and he did understand thoroughly that there were others and that we are very limited from my private conversations with him in space. Do you think other astronauts, when they were in space, oh, were, yes. didn't, were not all aware of what was going no, on? No, they're all aware. My dad was very close to, um, to, excuse me, I'll be right back. Stay there. Keep going. Very close to John Glenn. And he spoke with John Glenn several times about some of the developments that we have set aside. We have wonderful developments that have just been lost, put aside. And I'll talk about that at another time. But he was very aware of the limitations. But how can they take that to their deathbed? How, how do the astronauts take that to their deathbed that they know that there's more out there? How do you keep Some that? Some don't. Look at Edgar Mitchell. 
you know it some do not take it to their I mean to their deathbed they, there's many outspoken astronauts and but is it is it a cover-up uh, I don't know if it's a cover-up in their case as much as it is a embarrassment but then if India and China are going to eventually go to the moon are they going to cover it up as well when does the cover-up start? I mean, the cover-up the cover starts, it, see, you, you must have the economy to support these secret missions and such. So if it affects the economy, it gets covered up. So you think it will be an ongoing cover-up if the Chinese, when they eventually do no, go to the moon? No. As soon as the old-timers die off that were NSA, C, CIA, like I mentioned, that, that never meant to be the cover-up, as soon as they die off, which they are dying there off. There was never meant to be a cover-up. Never meant to be a cover-up. And now if they reveal it, what happens when they're still alive? Tremendous embarrassment to them, personally even, well, many of them. Don't they fear that people would purposefully go crazy because they've got a purpose to do it? No, not go crazy, not but purpose, the society, but the, the, the economy would suffer. But do you think people would go a bit crazy if they knew there was much more? Do you think they would say, well, this is an excuse now nah, to act wacko my father, jacko? My father says they can handle it, and besides, there's been a slow acrement of Well, look knowledge. at the movies. Yes, of you course, know, Hollywood. I mean, it's almost like saying, we told you, but mm. we didn't. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so. and recently the new release from the military showing the UFO, you know. It's all and, and, part of... And Nick Povich, you know, the, I mean, people are beginning to come forward now and there is an understanding and the, the more than 50 percent of the people are believing nowadays but it, but but why haven't they come here in person to the masses there must be a reason for that that they've never shown themselves to 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 be saying you know you know here we are it's if if you were spiritually intelligent right mm -hmm. because you you're not you're not just um, technologically advanced we would hope that you're spiritually advanced as well. Some say well, it doesn't. You don't need to be spiritually advanced to be technology advanced, right? But I, I think they've go hand oh, in I hand. Oh, I agree with you. You yeah. do need that. Why, if you were to come here, you would be imposing your truth onto someone else? Mm -hmm. Well, in history, it shows that when a superior race comes into a society, it always disappears. The society disappears. It turns into something else. History will teach you that. Well, aren't you know? they going to do that then? If if, if disclosure was going to happen, isn't that going to isn't that could that be a natural ramification of what happens? Well, it could be. Well, then who wants that really? Well, it, you know, it, it's hard to say why, but it was never meant to be a cover up. So that right there should tell you that it's okay. But there are still those that don't think it's okay or they're sworn to secrecy with their top secrets, or they want to protect their money, they're being paid. You know, people reject change. You know, I, I always felt as a young kid, I was born into this world and I had no choice of the way it was. It was just the way it was. Correct. Have I always agreed with it? No. Right. Do I feel that we have free will to create the life we want? Well, before I started my documentary on Challing, I thought we did. <laughs> I still think we do in some respects, but I don't feel like I'm, even if there's a, you know, an Illuminati out there or whatever, right? I don't let it, it doesn't control my life. I get on and do what I want. Yeah. Right? Would I be okay with a mass change? Well, maybe we would have no choice. Maybe that's, if this was to come out, we'd have no choice but to... But, I might, you know, if an Eben was in front of me now, an extraterrestrial biological entity, right, I don't know if I could handle it mentally. Mm -hmm. I don't... And is there others, even though I'm in this field, is there others like me that would maybe say, you know, not want to admit it, but say, that, you know, it's just too far out of my acceptance of a reality? Why? Well, look, look what it would do to the liberal media. Destroy them, of course. Yeah. So, so, so you so destroy them, you're hurting the society. So, what's that say about the cover-up for the UFO secret? Then it says it's very important. Mm -hmm. Well, I have said before on film, I don't believe it's a UFO cover-up. I believe that it's a time travel cover-up. My father, we had the documents. We don't have them anymore on the Philadelphia experiment. Einstein worked on it. My father did reveal that. And I just don't believe, I have set at a very important meeting about time travel. 
They wanted to know what my father knew and such like that. I have stated my issues that there is no future and there is no past. There's only a now. And the way that I think of it is very simple. As a computer, there are icons. You know your birth, you know your mother, and you know your birthdays, you know when your child was born, and each one is a picture within the brain. Well, the way that time works is those icons are sideways. There is no future, there is no past. There's only the memory of those icons. And can you draw from them as a human being? Yes, you can. But there are those that cannot do that. So if the ET would land here, he would have that ability and it would segregate our society. See, there are other issues besides religion involved. There's the mental parts that are involved. I don't know if that's hard to follow or what, but uh, these are the type of mind games that need to be played to understand why they do not reveal themselves to the masses. Going, going back to the, what time is, you know, different to what we think, what, just break down, try to break down what you're just saying there. So it, 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 Jesus is dying on the cross right now. So all past lives, future we lives are, are happening We now. are limited beings. All we can see is when we were born and our timeline to when we die. It's insignificant in relation to the trillions and the universe. It's insignificant. There is no start if you look at that. It's like uh, Voyager looking back from the edge of our universe, looking back and seeing one single pixel. Is it important? No. Our, our whole existence is not important into relation. So why should we measure time? We know we go on after our death. We know we were somewhere before our death. My thinking is that human existence is just a coffee break from eternity. So I, I know this is deep, but what I'm getting at here is very simple, Kevin. There are other reasons why we don't no. Okay. Some can handle it, some can't. Okay, so if all time's happening at once, so past and future lives are happening now, mm -hmm. right? And present moment is really all we've got. The rest is an illusion, right? Right. right. Why, why is that then, uh, um, when you say that time travel is the real agenda here, not, the, not, not that we're, we've been visited or there's other technology right. out there, why do you still say that time travel is the real agenda here, though? Well, time travel is to cover up because... Sitting at this table, which I will explain maybe further later, I was tricked into it by the head of the black projects for the Air Force. And I can mention his name. He probably wouldn't mind, but uh, I won't. And I was sitting at this table with Dalai Lama's representatives, with, uh, with military representatives, with scientific representatives, and the man that was heading this up, um, he is a wanted to release time travel to the universities. And he makes all the transformers for the Philadelphia experiment. His name is Mr. Beckworth. He's passed about four years ago. And we're sitting at this table, and I'm tricked into the head of the table, and I say, what the hell is going on? Why, why am I here? So... The colonel from the black press says, just sit, Phil, and answer these guys' questions, you know. Well, I never realized it, but I knew their questions before they answered it. I don't know if I was mind reading or just up on the, the, what they were going to ask because right. of the way it was presented. So it goes around the table. Should they reveal Mr. Beckworth's time travel machine to the universities to study? Should they make it public, in other words? And everybody voted on it, and they wanted to know what I thought about it. And I said, well, it's very simple. I work on aircraft. They go from point A to point B. No questions asked. But in time travel, you have to have a benevolent reason to go from point A to B. Otherwise, you bring back excess of baggage. The Dalai Lama's representative stood up, and he says, I told you military people that. They're having problems. That's what the meeting is about. Now, I won't go into the problems because it's probably too mental to understand for most of us. I quite don't even understand it. 
But that was the synopsis. Then we get up and we all go into another room and watch the trying travel machine disappear. My father said the Air Force did this with revolving fields, the same as the Allridge had during, during the Philadelphia experiment, and two of the airplanes winked out of existence, so they quit doing it. We have had time travel for a long, long time, our submarines and such. I don't want to get into too many things, though, that are hard to believe, but, but the Earth and our society is not what most people think it is. But f obviously, you know, there'll be people watching this that will be like, well, that's unprovable. What mm -hmm. he's saying there, there's no proof I whatsoever. understand. And how do you prove that he, he, he says he saw it, he seems mm -hmm. like a nice guy, Yeah. but as, as some of these researchers, like Richard Dolan would say, without the proof, we can't, you know, there's nothing to move, there's nothing to grab, to grab at. Well, there's no proof to uh, God. No, and most people in this world believe in a form of it. Right. Right. Okay. I mean, I can't answer that. No, no. The but proof. I, I'm just the smoking gun. This is what everyone's people, everyone is looking for. It. This is what people yeah. are thinking that are watching this right now. So, if you can change the future or past, you could do a lot of damage with that. If you only knew when you were going to die, you would do a lot of damage with that with your own self, because you would be doing things. You would be risking your life doing things that are changing your life. Where, where did Mr. Beck, whoever this person is, get the technology for time travel from? Uh, he developed it with the military during the war. And during the war, <clears throat> you know the Battle of the Atlantic, the, it, the war was being lost from the U-boats, the PACs. So they, the Germans had a mine that was magnetic, and it would have ships pass over, come up in the middle, and blow several ships up. My dad and others, Einstein, my dad went to Einstein during this time of Eisenhower, when he was with Eisenhower, and said, can we do anything about this? Eisenhower says, I mean, not Eisenhower, Einstein says we can move it through time and space 500 yards or whatever it was. I'm just using that 500 yards. I don't know how far it is. So the, they, they came up with the Philadelphia experiment. There really was such a thing that the ship did move from Newport News to Port Ritchie, and there was deaths involved and such, but they did perfect it. And it was not invisibility. I had the reports, and they were taken from me, um, and from my father. We had to hide all of his notes for the first five years because it was, we were being infiltrated by the, by the cover-up services. And this ship would actually be able to move the mines 500 yards through time and space. Highly developed, with the which ship, is time travel, with the, ship, the all ridge. Would the ship move with the mine, or the mine would be moved by the ship's technology? The, the mines would be moved by the ship's technology, and it wasn't just one ship. We had highly developed it after that. Two revolving fields of the Earth's frequency, which is 8 point something megs. But what about all those sailors that were on that ship that knew of this? There, there was an accident in the beginning. It was perfecting it. Was perfecting it. Well, how many people on the ship knew of what technology was really on there? Was I it, don't know. It could have been compartmentalized? I remember reading the report, and I'd rather not talk about it. But, but my point is, if, if, there were, if, if I was on a ship, and that happened to me, I've signed the Secrecy Act probably, right? Yeah. So can I really talk about it? But then I could say, then, your dad signed the Secrecy Act, did he not? Well, he had nine clearances above top secret, but he was also the classifier and the declassifier. He, he, he insta You know, my father took the first nukes to Europe. He was involved in many, many, many things. Star Wars, he recommended it to President Reagan. So my father was very behind the scenes on quite a few things. So all I'm saying to people, is there proof? Yeah, you saw the black bag, there's proof. We're going to do, do, I want, do I want to talk about that? Yeah, mm -hmm. I'll talk about it. But what's it going to bring? It's going to bring condemnation down on our family again. Again. And that's always a side effect of this, potentially, potentially, right? Mm -hmm. but, but let's look at this. Let's just go back to the time travel things before we, mm -hmm. we move on. And we will cover what you just said there as well. Um, so if that's what they had then, this wasn't reverse engineered from UFO technology? Yes. The ideas were? Yeah, Germans had a UFO, my dad said. 
night vision was given to Port, Fort Belvoir because they had already had the Germans' night vision. He, they planted the, the, the artifacts into the areas and then took them back, and military had the first priority, and then the civilian, they said, you can use it to make money or whatever. But if, so, they, so yes. But if Einstein was working on the Philadelphia experiment, for mm -hmm. example, where did Einstein's theories come, where did those ideas come from? Were they from Einstein? Yes. Or were they from reverse engineered technology plus Einstein? They were from Einstein, but the implement it was, to implement it was from reverse technology. So there must have been crashes prior to 47. When we took, yes there were, the Germans had a crash and my dad was in charge of Operation Paperclip for Eisenhower that brought the German scientists here, they brought the technology with them. So the Germans, from their crash. So, so, so the Germans, Timeline, before, before Roswell 47. Yes, and, and America must have got hold of these, some of these secrets. Ah, uh, all of them. All of them, right, yeah. Except for what the Russians had nothing. My father and General Trudeau used to laugh at the Russians when they used to try to make a space shuttle and make a SST. I mean, they, they would laugh at them because they did not have, the, they still today do not have the technology. It's a joke. So you think they're using, they've perfected a, a better version of time travel right now? The government, oh, absolutely. But then, but then, but then, what's that doing? I mean, how, if they're changing reality, how excess would, of baggage. How would remember we, that word I said? That that is a see in a benevolent universe, there is no paradox where you go back and kill your father and you don't exist. It's very, very involved, and I don't think we should go into that no, direction no, no, right no. now. Okay, okay, but but. If they were, if there were changes going on in this reality, mm -hmm. be, would I know the difference if, if if someone's gone back in time, for example, and changed mm -hmm. something in the past, and they come back to this time? They're never coming back to the same timeline. They're not coming back to my time. They're going back to a parallel universe. Well, that's maybe. the way it works. Let me explain it real quick, if I may. <clears throat> you go back in time. Do you come forward in that same parallel? No. You're growing forward in a different parallel. You go back again, you're growing, in, and you say, well, what's that got to do with this first timeline? Right. What has one wave got to do with the other wave? Right. It, it changes it. It does ripple across. It does ripple across, yeah. It, and that's the way reality works. In wave, with one timeline, only with one timeline. So, so, so they're, going, they're going back, they're, they're then, they're then gone, they've, they've made a, a change, whatever that is, mm -hmm. they, they steal gold from um, somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's going to make it. That should make a difference to this timeline that they came from. Well, it does. But but they, but they never go back to the original timeline. They go back to another version. Yeah, let's take the Roswell craft for instance. Yes, I'll let's give you do an that. example. <laughs> okay, let's just say theoretically that I build this ship in the future. Let's say twenty thirty four, and I load it with a bunch of technology and I send it back, nineteen forty seven. And I say in 1947, okay, Americans are smart enough to take this technology and move forward with it, okay? Well, my father and General Trudeau said, maybe this technology is going to work in reverse. It may not, there's always a yin and a yang to technology. Look at the internet, the trouble it's causing right now and such. So maybe the message wasn't strong enough. So maybe when this grows forward into the next reality, and I build it again, and I send it back. I'm going to put a little stronger message in here. They didn't get it. You see? Now, does it, did that affect this one over here? Absolutely. They all, it, it all runs together as a ripple in that so pond. So it automatically right ripples to the other universe. See, see the pond? Just like it, yeah, it yeah. One's there. reinforcing the other. But if you're sending me that back, mm -hmm. as, as, as we progress here, you're progressing quicker. Yeah. Are you progressing spiritually quicker? Well, that's the question my father and General Trudeau had. Technically, we would be able to take these advances. Morally, can we take these advances? They, they, they toyed with that and they toyed with that and never came up with an answer, my father said. So this could be fact factions or split off from groups in the future that are trying to change their path. So let's, let's look at that then. Let's, so, so did, did your dad believe that the craft, and this is a, a replica of what the craft looked like? Which my yeah. dad worked with a fellow named McDonald, a young man, 
and they drew it out and engineered it forward with two other guys, <laughs> two other ex-military. If this was from the future, then... Have you ever seen the planes I build, the velocities? These are called winglets, and it's a pusher with a propeller back here and has the canard, right. Rutan's pictures up there. Very similar. And my father always said, came to the wheel wells, and it changed the subject for a second, came to the wheel wells on the planes I built, said that's where the anti-gravity devices go. Now, that's all. <laughs> Won't speak no more about that part. Go but, ahead. But then, what's vis when, when I had my UFO experience, mm -hmm. I saw, a, well, I think it was, mm -hmm. a silver it was, but a circular craft. Of course. Why, why is there circular craft different to this one that was sent back? You see the bottom? Look at the bottom. Look like heat tiles, right? Yes. This is living biology. And what you're seeing is the aurora, aurora around it, the aura around it, living biology. It died after it crashed. And it went into two different places. I know it's getting very involved. There was Corona and there was also Roswell. Part of it went there 10 years, part of it went back here 10 years. It was a time travel machine, remember. Now, what does it have to do? It has to go outside our atmosphere in order to time travel. We know time changes in the satellites, and the atomic clocks have to correct them, okay? So we understand space-time now to a certain point that the scientists have. Do they need to understand more? Yes. It's falling apart. <laughs> it crashed. I should apologize. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> yeah, it's you know, it, it, it would take many, many hours for me to explain this. So, I'd be glad to do no, it because that's my subject. No, okay, okay. So, so this, this, so wasn't, wasn't the Rendlesham Forest incident, wasn't that craft supposed to be intelligent? They yes. said it was from the future. Yes, and say everything is all right in the code. It said everything's all right in the future. Then disappear. Um, so well, it can't stay. No. So you know why it can't stay? It destab just to, all the all the crafts that have crashed have been taken back. It can't stay here. Where is this? Where is this craft now? Back to where it belongs. The pieces. Not only the pieces. Now, my father had some pieces, but understand the Air Force took most of it. This was only what was put in a jeep and put in a file. And then the file was delivered to my dad by General Trudeau when he came aboard in 1960. So but the crafts can't stay here. It destabilizes. So, so, this, so this would have been an, a, a, a biological uh, and Entity. conscious mm -hmm. AI craft. Mm -hmm. These would have been the Evens inside the craft. These are night viewing devices. There's a, there's a three and a half degree sweep here. Through the atmosphere, it flies this way. They view from the bottom. It has a field density device. Remember that word. The density is lower in the front and higher in the back. Field density device. Do I know how to build it? Absolutely. Have you? Well, let me tell you, when my dad was in Roswell revealing the book, Whitley Schrieber, I sat at the table with him in breakfast that morning. He says, and usually I'm not embarrassed. And he says, are you ready to build a craft? And I turn red in the face. I can't answer. My wife answers and says, she says, no, it's your father's time now. It's not your time. Now, does the military know how to do this and all? Yes, they have known for a long time. Do the civilians know how? No. It's a time-released schedule. Is it now? Can I release it? Yes. What was that device at the front called? It was called a... Field density and device. And what does that do? It changes the density. Think about that for a minute. If you can control the density of matter, it's a technological advance that, that would be 2,000 years away. So when this, is when this is moving, its density is changing as well, or has changed? It can change the density, yeah. And that's how it travels through time. Remember... An er, uh, a tablespoonful of collapsed star can fall right through the earth. Density. That's all the universe is. It's motion and density and space-time. You, you were just saying that the military could reverse engineer this craft, maybe. They already have. But how do you reverse engineer in AI how, it, from technology 2,000 years or more in the future? Well... Because my father said in research and development, 
They, they came to the conclusion in 1963 that there were more advancements that year than last year and all the previous years in history. It's exponentially up. They can literally do anything they want to do. So you feel by now that graph just going to My dad scale. said, yes, absolutely. My dad said that we have absolutely caught up with ET except for biology. They're still ahead of us in biology. But in my lifetime, mm -hmm. this technology, I, I may have seen it, and a, a scrap of that technology when I you had my UFO. You saw time travel. You saw time travel, not a UFO experience. You saw a time. Do you notice how some of the UFOs that appear are opaque? They're not quite there and all. They're not, and they wobble around. They're not quite developed from the time they came from, and they're they're not quite here and not quite what there. What about a cigar? Shape? Pardon me. What about cigar shape? Yeah, say it's all. Because it, it seemed when I saw it's all our future, no matter where it came from. If it came from out there, it's still our future. But in my lifetime, it's our future that also brings back some of this. But in my lifetime, I don't. I don't know. Maybe I'm creating my reality saying this. I don't feel that this is ever going to be released, that they've reversed engineered something like this. And also, the technology that would give us free energy is never going to come out in my lifetime. Why, why do I say that? Like, so feel, confident for? Have I got it wrong? Field density. But, but, but right now, we're relying on conventional power plants. Of course. Conventional technology. No we, such thing as solar. No, you know, yeah, it, it's yeah. We've got this, we've carbon got, we've got, footprint. We've, we've got the normal space program still just trying to evolve as it is. Mm -hmm. Scientists with their understanding. It's of a it. rouge. Because astronauts have come back and been very angry. In fact, one of the astronauts said, punched the director in the nose. In NASA. And he said, yeah, in NASA. And he says, What's, why did you do that? He says, how dare you send us there on bicycles when the military's there in Ferraris. But, but, and, and that could be looked up. And, and yeah. still now, though, where is this out there in, in helping us with, with progressing us as mankind? It's the government has kept to the secret, or the factions within the government. Okay, see this table here? My father said they developed a nuclear plant the size of this table, and it put out RO, you know, of water, in Alaska for six years without being touched. He went to John Glenn and mentioned this. Also, they had a car that ran off four flashlight batteries for a year. Now, there's a technology that they still don't know about, and I'm going to tell you what the technology is. Fluid amplification. That's an oxymoron, according to scientists. You cannot amplify fluid. It can't be compressed. There's an integrated circuit that's in there, and the military knows about it, that amplifies hydraulics within a, within a, a, a micro circuit. Now, those technologies are there. Why don't we use them? Because of the political scene. Now, your dad, he never... All, all the information you, you know now that you've been describing to me, this all came out the, uh, once the book started to come out? No. 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 This has always been with me, ever since I was a small child. It's the same as you've told me that you had certain knowings too. But no, I mean, sorry, let me It's ask a pro pre-programming, I believe. But, but what you know about this, mm -hmm. did your dad tell you about this? What you know about after, this? After, after. That's what I mean. Sorry, after. Sorry. So your dad t explained the, about the craft to you uh, after... But I already knew most of it. The book came out. I already knew most of it. And how, do you, how did you know most of what you've just told me? Because I've had many, many experiences as a young man. UFO experiences or, or alternative experiences? Time travel experiences. Time tra did you ever tell your dad about your experiences in the end? You know, that's a good question. I think so, because some of it, as my father was having a encounter, I was having it also. But we never really talked about it. I can't remember ever really talking about it. So no. that, Only the photographs he didn't like. So, so your UFO experiences in your early years, which only came out to, for you to talk about 
maybe even now. Is this the first? It only came about? out after the book. After the book, because yeah. you know it's yeah. yeah. That to me shows some sort of connection to these beings that you've got as well. You know, it's some sort of family lineage kind of absolutely yeah connection. My sons, you know, they don't talk about it anymore because it only brings heartaches. And you know everything on the book has already been said, but the experiences afterwards, for instance, like I told you about the president and stuff, you know, these are real experiences. You know, we've had CIA pull up in front of the hangar in vans full of electronic equipment and stuff. You know, it, it was ongoing. And what I say, reason I'm mentioning this is, if it wasn't true, why the hell have we've had all these experiences afterwards, lawsuits and and you know infiltration, coming in the house, taking things. If it wasn't true, they wouldn't be bothered with it. Well, why have they left you alone now? Made a deal. Made a deal. Are you breaking that deal speaking to me? Probably. But it's been years after that deal. I've told you about the deals in private, and that was a long time ago. Fifteen years, five, five years after my father's death. So I'm 74, going on 75 soon. Do I really care anymore? Nah, but I care about my family. I don't know what it implicate, you know, what it, how it would uh, affect them. You know, so do I care? Kind of, yeah. Do I want to tell? Kind of, yeah. But my business is closed, so maybe uh, I can reveal a little bit. I know what to reveal and what not to reveal. How, how much of what your dad's... Okay, Stanton Freeman said to me in a previous interview mm -hmm. that your dad just wanted to be famous. Mm -hmm. He wanted the fame. Mm -hmm. He invented the story. Mm -hmm. Look at his career. There's paperwork to back it up. How can you invent a lifetime of a career like this? And that paperwork is, again, remind us? It's, it's his career. My father's career. Can I have a look at it? Absolutely. So this is his... Um... Took the first nukes. As a young man, my father never laid a hand on me. I can't remember him telling a lie or fabricating, except for a few things in the book that he was forced to fabricate by others that only wanted to make money. He kind of went along with them. He got angry at the end and went through a book and yellowed everything out that wasn't true. How did he get to the, the rank that he did? I mean, how do you get to that rank? My father had a photographic memory, and it was so strong that after the book, he would be describing things to people, what color shirt you had on 10 years ago and such. And I'd tell my dad, taper off, dad. It's making it unbelievable. You don't need to describe it in detail. But that was my father's memory. How did he become... An intelligence officer. He was drafted into the military. He couldn't leave with his other friends. I have that original stories. And because of his photographic memory, they put him in officer's candidate school. And then they decided to send him to Cambridge University before the war. We had no intelligence. So he was taught the intelligence, came back after the war to Fort Riley, Kansas, and taught intelligence to our... The British used to say, how green our ally. Because my dad didn't know crap when he first went overseas to Cambridge University. So he worked his way up. Worked his way up, and then he went with uh, MacArthur. And back then, all they had was, was the microtapes, you know. But my father interrogated over a thousand prisoners himself, and he took a different stand. Instead of not believing them, he believed everything they said. So he said on the Pan Moon John peace talks with North Korea. And they, the enemy knows their own weakness. So he put together, he was the only officer ever uh, uh, celebrated and given medals from the Air Force because they did the narrow torpedoes and went into the big wide rice dams. They would bomb them and they'd be repaired the next morning. But when you put delayed torpedoes in there that go off at different times, end of the war, food is gone. So the peace talks, I'm not saying my dad single-handedly did this, there were others, many other brilliant people involved, but that's the type of person my father was. He could remember all thousand interrogations. He yeah. was unusual. Did Strangest you... man I ever met. <laughs> <laughs> but had he come across the, the Roswell incident prior to getting hold of that cabinet? He didn't. He wasn't at Roswell. So it was that compartmentalized, the secret was? 
Yes, it was. He was not at Roswell, but he he was in. Stan Freeman said, "MJ thirteen. Your father said he was on that. It doesn't show his name. No, it doesn't, because he was the person that MJ reported to for Eisenhower. That's why Eisenhower called him in and said, "What's this all about, Corso?" So Freeman didn't have all the information. MJ twelve, you mean? MJ-12, yes. My father was the 13th member of it, on, not on paper. He was the one they reported to. Colonel North's job, liaison. You know, so Stan Freeman doesn't have all the information. And he says, your father was not a colonel. Well, when a lieutenant colonel retires, they always move you to the next rank. It's an honorary service. He doesn't know that. He was never in the military. And you've got in that room in there, which we're just showing now, uh, his medals. medals yeah. yeah. The one he's the most proud of, Kevin, is that he was th the Italian decoration as knight. He was the only American because he was G2 of Rome after the war. And there's a whole story in there I would like to see printed, a whole book. It's fantastic. And I would like to see that printed. And... He was the only American to ever be knighted by the King of Italy. He was very proud of that medal. I have all the certificates also. But he was a strange man. Took the first nukes to, to Germany. I think I already mentioned that. And Eisenhower had him take him there. He knew the Kennedys very well. He knew the Reagan very well. How much misinformation is in his book that he had to put in there just to keep the family safe. Ten percent is in the book, my dad said. But I'm talking about misinformation. Is there any misinformation, do you think, in that book? Yes, there's some misinformation, but it's mostly technicolor. It's what was put in the first two chapters when people read the book, I tell them ignore it, because you already know about the Roswell. Mr. Burns said, well, we have to put that in there because, and as far as uh, being you know, some of the stuff in there my dad was, there was never a legal done on the book with Simon & Schuster. Uh, there was personal family relationships there to get it through real quick. And my father never had a chance to proofread it, which very much upset him. So, so the book has not technical items in it. It's really not a book about UFOs. As you know, it's a book about government. And there's a lot more to be said about all of that. So the editor added things, there were things added in that book. So when your dad got... Chris Corbin Chris was Cor the editor. So, 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 so did he add things in that shouldn't have been in there? Pardon me? Did he add things into the book that shouldn't have been added? Did he... No, there was no legal done, no proofreading. So when your dad first got the first copy, but he, I remember you saying that he yellowed marks. Yeah, very upset. But, but who, who made those mistakes in the book? Who made the mistakes? Yeah, that you, I'm not going to call them mistakes. I'm going to call them colorful metaphors. <laughs> and who put those in there? Bill Burns. And Bill Burns was? The co-author. That he met through George Knapp? Yes. And is Bill Burns still with us? He's on Ancient Aliens and all that, you know. Bill Burns is a brilliant man, and I always thought he would be the next Steven Spielberg. Uh, looks like he got caught up in the UFO thing rather than moving on. Before that, he was a horror story writer, as I understand it. In Good man, though. Very intelligent. Absolutely. He made the book. He made the book profitable, th even though my dad received no money from it. I have. I own the rights, and we really s still receive royalties. The new audio book has been put out by Bill Burns, which is brilliant, and it has information in it that's not in the book. Where did that information come from? Me. Yeah. Did you, and, work, did you and, work with Bill to make the audio version? And afterwards, Bill Burns, you know, talked to my father quite a bit during the time that the book was released. So there's additional, there's a time capsule buried in Roswell. Said for it's very important for my sons to be there in 50 years, all three sons, when it's opened. Who, where, do you know where it is? Sure. It's and, right outside the, the Goddard Museum. Who, oh, right. Mm-hmm. Right. Very important for my sons to be there during the opening. Okay. I don't know what's in it. I wish I did.
because I won't be there, <laughs> probably. Well, <laughs> unless I'm a hundred and something years we old. We don't always last that long, do we? That's the problem. I don't want to last that long. No, no. <laughs> um, well, I'm grateful for you being here right now. Um, I, you know, there's so much we could say about the, about the book. So, so okay, what you just said there as well. There's only there's, there's only ten percent of the information in that that that, that that's the book is about that contains the information that your dad had. Your, how much more information do you have that could be released to make more books? Wow, never thought of that one. I don't know how to answer that. But you, there is more material you've got. <sighs> yeah, but I have a hard time sometimes separating what I think I know and from what my dad told me, or is in the book. So is there more information? But there's the black yeah. bag in there. There's the black bag in there that's, that my father gave it to Paula Harris, and he said this is very important. The black bag has been pilfered, though. Has it been published, what was in there? Not a, no. The EB thing I showed you, how he's made, came from the John Hopkins Review. My father said that's true because they never would have known about the eyelid release, you know, the cover in the eye. That was the night vision that he held up in but, the book. But that even thing I read in that room, is that your dad's notes? Yes, personally. Yeah. No. Let's just say about the even, uh, that this was, a bi- so this was a biological entity that could go past the radiation belts and that could survive. Made to travel in space. Made to travel. These bodies were made to travel in space that were in this craft. Yeah, they had two, two brains, not two hemispheres like we have. One brain is laced with integrated circuits to feed back the information. The other one lets them run as a, as a ET or as a... Um, so they were part of the craft? Yeah. They're, they're part of the craft. That's where the head device came from. So what that. built, who made these? Us from the future? Well, I'm not going to answer that at this time. We've talked about the future, what it is, and the way that I see it. Once you see it my way, you have information. Do we become them, maybe? No, I don't think so. No. It's strictly a ET. Well, it... Not, not just an extra life, but a, a um, IA. Were they fr- we, we, we're saying they're from the future. Who's to say they wasn't from the past? Well, of course. It's one and the same, as I told you. That's the way I see it. Icons. You send the ship back. It's like something kind of, you know, you see these drawings, and I don't know if I've got this right from it, like Atlantean type kind of ideas. It's a, look at the picture up there, it's a whale. Yeah. Is, is it not a, a, a starfish? Right. Yeah? It, no, I but, mean a, a uh, no, stingray? But what I'm saying is, what if this was from Atlantis, sent from the past into the future? Uh, but then Atlantis, that would make no sense, would it? Atlantis because, not the past, no, no. it's the future. It's the future, okay. Yeah. Just tell me about um, when your dad got this this box of technology uh, from the Roswell incident. Um, I mean, we, we, you, he's talked about a filing cabinet. It I was, mean, yeah, okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, well, was it a filing cabinet or was that just your way, dad's way of saying as an analogy? Of no, what it, was? it was a file cabinet that was stored away and lost for years in the basement of the Pentagon. General Trudeau knew about it. And he says... I'm having it delivered to your office. He said, here's my dad's words. General Trudeau said, Colonel, now Freeman criticized my dad before he went into the R&D job because he had just come back from Germany as inspector general over there and bringing the first nukes to the 552 missile battalion. And my dad was in a holding pattern because he was only in Annapolis there in the uh, guard. National Guard, and he was in a holding pattern until General Trudeau could bring him aboard. So when General Trudeau brought him aboard, he says, Corso, are you aboard? And my dad told me later that he knows what that meant. It meant this stuff. And they actually was in a file cabinet down in the basement, stored away, lost. 
but nothing done with it. And that's why my father says a lot of the technology that came from this is still down there or somewhere, not being used. But but the but the Air Force may have it, my father said. Do you think they still have the bodies? Because I heard that the bodies were they, they disintegrated pretty badly. Yeah. But do you think they still got them on ice in some form? I don't know. I can only tell you about the Pentagon story that my father told me. There's a room that you go into like a jail cell. You take no computer, no writing, no anything to record with. Whatever's in your memory, you can come out and they will answer it. Or it. I, I see it as a alien, but it could be a computer. I don't know what it is. He never said. But he says he comes out of that room and it, all knowledge is there. It's like an oracle, I guess. Which could have come from this craft or some other craft. Yeah. Or from, a, from an entity. I don't know. Did one of the Why would it be a jail cell? Keep people from going in or coming out? I don't know. <laughs> well, absolutely. And, and did one of the... Was there a survivor on this crash? I don't know. My father never really got into the detail of the crash itself. He went to the site afterwards. We did. Yeah, he was brought to the site. And in fact, during the Roswell 50th anniversary, they asked my dad, is it this site or this site? And he says, well, here's the one I came to with the military afterwards. Because the crash was 10 years apart because it was a time travel ship. Part yeah. of it crashed in 1947, and the other crash was, which one was that? That was Corona. Corona. Which the was other parts. 10 years later. Yeah. And is that, is that verifiable in something that's, I guess? It's yeah, that's verifiable. That's verifiable, verifiable. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well... It goes deep. <laughs> My father at that time was in White Sands, New Mexico, preparing the 552 missile battalion to take the nukes overseas. And um, uh, he was there during the corona part. And they had taken the, uh, the radars and moved them down to pencil beam. And from that, the first particle weapons were developed, which is still in White Sands. And we went to the museum. And the director of the museum was really amazed that my father was there and showed him the first particle weapon, which my dad helped develop and helped develop Star Wars with Reagan. Or actually, Reagan called him and said, you see, the Cold War was not necessarily about the Cold War. It was about in planetary infiltration from others. They were... They were destabilizing our military bases, our nukes, and such like that. And not to go into another story, but that was a planetary defense system. So, so when we look at what's going on with Russia now, with the Russian allega with the allegations against Russia of hacking and everything else, is that just a bit of... Well, the, the ETs, my dad said... My dad told me the Berlin Wall was going to come down years before it did because the Russians have violated the ET mandate. First of all, we were told to stay out of space. That's why we didn't go back to the moon for many years. We weren't ready. Second of all, do not put nukes in space. My dad said the Russians violated that, put nukes in space, and they were told to close. They didn't fail. They were told to close. I know, fantastic, isn't it? Well, yeah, I mean, and again, when you was a child these fantastic calls would come in from high rank. I mean, you never, you never took the calls, did you, from some of these famous, you know, like the presidents that were called, called, called your dad up? You just know that your dad told you that he took some of these calls at home sometimes in his career? Oh, he was always, even in his retirement, he was always behind the scene with the president, most presidents. But Not all. But were you aware of that? Oh, yes. I saw him stand at attention when Reagan would call in my business, you know. It, it, you know he would stand up and say, yes, sir, and salute, even though he was on the phone, you know, of course. Did you think that was normal? Yeah. I knew he was involved in a lot. But not exactly. As a boy, I knew he was involved in a lot. Are you adding J. Edgar Hoover called my dad a rat. He hated him. <laughs> <laughs> are you are you adding anything to your dad's story that wasn't there originally? Are you trying to fill are you trying to fill in pieces so that it makes sense for you? My dad's story? Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 the strangest man I ever knew. But you're not ad adding anything extra that shouldn't be in it just so that it makes more sense for people to listen to. Yeah. This is the story as you know it. As I know it. As yeah. you know it. So so I never knew my father to tell a lie or exaggerate. 
because an intelligence officer is taught not to do that. Right, right. He's just, he's a nothing. He's just a recorder that's bringing back the information. That's all. Not to exaggerate it, not to give a political view on it, not to give his view on it. When he gave, so he never, so we never knew whether there was an actual um, live entity that that, room, that, room, that was taken away at the crash. Well, it says in the front of the book that one came over the hill and we shot it and all that. We don't know yet. Right, 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 right. Okay. Um, but that wasn't my dad saying that. No, no, of course not. That's the Hollywood. And 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 when thing, you know, when you listen to the old interviews with Art Bell, when, for example, you know, there was a, a liquid gel that the that the no. beans were kept in, you know, not in, in those in the days. We didn't have that technology. Anybody can see through that. But your dad, in had, your dad had to keep to some story of of what was in the book, so that the book wouldn't, you know, wouldn't. My dad was 75 years old, easily influenced by the money that was told he was coming his way, which he never got a penny of. Yeah. And he was easily influenced. He said, this is the way books are written. He was a virgin at it. I always told him he would never be paid. I knew it because I was a businessman. I, I, could, I ran businesses for years, and I know when somebody is not going to pay you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but he had to go along with some things in the book, even though he probably didn't want to go along with them because they'd already been printed and there was no way of changing it. Of course. It. Yeah. Of course. That's quite sad, isn't it? Isn't Very it? sad. Yeah. So Against his grain. That's why he sat down and did the yellow. Right, to, you know. to, to the first copy he's got. But we don't have that copy of that book with the I yellow. I may. Oh, it might I be may. somewhere. It was a paperback, I right. remember. Right. But when, when he took this technology to companies... From from the camera, he must have had to look high and low for companies that were kind of close, so it wouldn't just seem like it came yeah. out of the blue. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Harris Labs up here did quite a bit of work just in Melbourne, up the road. Here. Where are these original parts that were given? Do you think? Well, they, they remember they didn't give the parts out. It oh, even says didn't. that in the book. No, they gave the money and the allocation for them to develop in that direction. But, but did no one get to see? They it? gave them information. No about the parts, okay? The military had the parts, the army had the parts, research and development had the parts. Now, if they began to flounder, my dad said, or not develop, then the part would be introduced and taken back. Right, right, right. But no, the, no paper trail, but they didn't the, want a paper trail. But the people that were given these, 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 this delicate you know, information, mm -hmm. they must have known it was for, from, from somewhere else. Of course they did, of course. That's why when the book was written, we had these, all these scientists come to the house. They said, we knew, we suspected, we knew, you know, that there was something going on. Between 1960 and 1963, the world took off in development. When did your dad give the, the, the kind of bits to the companies that they, they were working with? I mean, what, what? 60 to 63. 60 to 63. Yeah. All the companies that answered my dad... 50 companies answered to him 25 years later. Now, what companies, anyway, it's in the other books, I guess. What companies would answer a man writing a book 50 years later and say, yes, we remember you? What companies would do that if it wasn't true? All 50 companies that they put the artifacts into and the development answered my father, and it's in the book. When you say answered, who, who, who made the call? The book my dad the, did. The, your dad called them? Yeah. Yeah, but these people would have been retired by then. Would they? It doesn't matter. The, it, it doesn't matter. They um, they answered him. The think, companies answered him. Do you think that's still going on in Silicon Valley right now? Yeah. Well, no. It's going on within the. Uh, it's going on. I, I, I'm having trouble with this book. I'd have to go get another one. It had. It has the fifty companies in the front that answered him. They're not here. Anyway. I have a book. The written, oh, that's a John Glenn book. No wonder. Oh, there's the book. <laughs> how, how stupid. No, it's all right. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, I was going crazy there. Yeah, I know, right? We, we change realities. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All of a sudden, time travel got involved. Here they are. Yeah. There's all your companies, and they all answered to my father. Or at least the people remaining there answered them. They have record of it. Still have record of it. On the other page, too. Now, why would they answer my father? 
How did they answer him? What were the answers like? We, we remember you, and yes, you know, yes, we remember the... The allocations are here to every one of these companies. If you search their records, came in from R&D to do the work. That's, that's that, available. That's still on their books. Yeah. From all those years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing, isn't it? Maybe Mr. Freeman should miss this page, I think, and some of the others. What? what okay, so you don't think that's still going on in Silicon Valley now, that parts are being... I don't know. ...siphoned in? I don't know. I mean, we've made more technological jumps in this century than any other century of our existence. Of course. I told you what Father said exponentially. You know? Exponentially. We well, can do anything. this century as well. He said we had caught that technology where, years ago. This was back when my father was still alive, 20 years ago. And he said we had caught that technology all but biology. But was this self-sacrifice to us for us to help ourselves, do you think? I believe that. To make it look like it was a crash to give us the free will of, oh, what's this? Let's see if No, we... it just crashed. <laughs> but it's a... Two accidents. But, but, but if this was free will, if this was gifted to us, mm -hmm. how can it be a crash? It was going to land somewhere? Purpose crash. That's what I'm saying. It was yeah. a purpose crash. Yeah, of course. For it to make it look like whoever sent it didn't do Yeah, that. you can have the thing land there and then the little ETs get out and say, I'm from your future to help you. No. That's not good. We wouldn't have believed that. No. We would have seen it as a negative thing. Yeah. But they self-sacrifice themselves. Are they selves? I don't know. Only God can answer that. They're grown. They're clones. Is a clone, if they made a clone of you, does it have a soul? I don't know. Only God knows that. Pretty deep, huh? Mind-blowing. Try living with it. How did you live with it? I don't. We, we put it away until right now. Why, why am I here? Well, I don't need to answer that. You know. <laughs> you know within yourself without an answer. Mm -hmm. Is that an answer? I'm not being cruel, I hope. No, 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 that's an yeah. answer. That's yeah, you an can answer, answer that. That's, it's, yeah. You're not here just to do what we're doing now, and you know that. There's no, more that. to it. I know yeah. that. You're, you're a very understood, very deep mental person, and uh, I knew that. I knew that. But I put you off in the beginning because I was very upset, and I'm still very upset at some of these so-called ufologists. They don't, they're, they're leading us down a path that they don't know anything. Right. Let's, just get, let's end this topic on that because that's a great place to take it to because this community is split. now. I know you're not keeping up now with no, ufology, I'm right? Not. You've I'm done not. the talks. You've done the conferences years ago, right? Yeah. So now you've got a lot of the secret space program stuff. You know, are there bases in Antarctic? Are there, you know, bases with this kind of stuff in there? Do you think? Absolutely. You think there could be? Yeah. There's bases. Look in at the base. Black Knight, you know. So you would say, in your truth, you would say there's potential bases which maybe are, you know, storing stuff like this or that's for military eyes only, whatever they're doing. Do, do you think we're in contact with these beings, or we're in contact with extraterrestrials? I know we are. are My father had contact, in and, I, and he's in, yeah, he's incapable of telling a lie. Of and, course. And what did they say? In a sense, when they were well, it, it, what they said. My father asked asked one of them, "Is it? Are he had his gun? He was in a cave, like many times happens." Told me as a young man. I can remember saying him saying very strange place, but he never mentioned E.T. being in there. And he drew a picture of the E.T. that was in there. And he asked him if he was uh, friendly or enemy. And he said, neither. And he said, well, what are you here for? And he says, a new world if you can take it. And I've mentioned that before. And that is, in fact, that's it. I understand that that may have been adapted into the UN as a greeting. 
So it may not have been a cave, but it may just, it, his way of, it, it it's may not a not cave, been, I mean, it, a cave doesn't make any sense, does it? it? it, it or let's just go in a cave and that's going to be, do you know what I mean? This, mysterious place or caves. Th- th- yeah, right, right. Yeah. But this probably wasn't a cave. Right. This was probably somewhere much more formal. Could be. A, a new world. And, and, and a new world could be where they've come from, maybe. But, but, but the Eben that he spoke to, where did that, was it from the future? There is no future. No. <laughs> okay. To answer your question... Was it from another parallel universe? That's the answer. Because my father said it was one on the ground. He was flying back in the puddle jumper from White Sands to El Paso. Actually, from Red Canyon. He developed that on his own because they didn't, have, they didn't want to know that the nukes were, were in White Sands. So he developed that on his own. They went up there and they fired. They had the first 12 foot 12 shot, took them to Europe and such. And um, it was like the Dirty Dozen. These were all rejects. And my father took them in and made them number one. Um, so that's another story. But he would fly there in this little puddle jumper and he saw a bright, shiny object on the ground. So he got in one of the big Jeeps, you know, like staff cars, and drove back there. And he says he sees this thing sitting on the ground. And it's going in and out of time. It's going, disappears, comes back. And he says, am I delusional? What the hell is it? So he says he throws a tumbleweed underneath of it. When the thing comes back, disappears again, the tumbleweed's all smashed, so he knew it was real. He sees these little footprints in the, my hair stand up, <laughs> sees these little footprints in the sand. And all of a sudden, he goes into a panic. And he flies backwards, get in the, in the staff car and flies backwards again. He says, all of a sudden, the thing goes like this and disappears into a donut. Why did he have that experience? I don't know. There was no communication, no nothing. But why that experience? Is that I, to show I, him? I, I don't know. No. And, and do you think, I don't think it, maybe it wasn't meant for do him. You think maybe he, it was an accident. If he had been regressed, then something else could have didn't that was an implant in memory that actually something else happened then? Yeah, I can't answer that right now. No. Not right now. No. no. Okay. Um... If they, okay, so they are, but, but how much control do they have over society, do you think, of where, we're, where we are now? Well, I believe there's five levels of control. Where are they in their levels? Uh, before God. So they are in, uh, and above the military? Yeah, the great military complex, the secret society or the bankers, mm-hmm. and then the one you're taught in school, which is uh, but President obviously, Trump and so. Most research is about the nuts and bolts. When you was in the UFO community, the research was much about nuts and bolts, right? Right. right. Now that, that that's gone to more of um, consciousness based right. um, research, right. right? Right. So, so that's because we're learning. If I may interrupt, that's because yeah. we're learning more about the universe. We're learning more and more and more and more. And as we learn more about the universe, we realize how much the mental ability goes into it because of what we don't know, how magnificent it is. Right. And you do you know. think it's teeming with life out there? Oh, absolutely. We yeah. know that. But we, we, we know that now. But again, they're not coming here to say, hey, they're, they're, they're kind they're of... They're part of the consciousness. Yeah, we're part of them, they're part this of This is an embryo, the earth, and it's growing, okay? And as it grows, more and more, more elements come, unupinium, more things become available. Are we not ready yet to join the community? I don't know. But they say that when the when Roswell happened, they there was an attraction for them to come because that's when the at- atomic uh, atomic. But My dad knew Olbert real well, father of the atomic bomb, real well, very well. And you know what he says? People don't know about this. When there's an atomic explosion, you see the mushroom crowd come up, right? Well, that's only part of the energy. They've no no. He figured out that the rest of the energy goes down through the earth, through the center, into another dimension. And that's what they're excited about. Energy that into another dimension that doesn't belong there. The, atomic, the atomics, when you measure the energy, it's only part of what should be but yielded. If they were from our future trying to evolve us in a way, mm-hmm. right? What's that good? Another what? dimension, not future. Another dimension. Well, you could call the future a dimension, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about M theory, multiple dimensions. 
But if they're us from the future, say, say, if we've said in this interview, maybe they sacrifice themselves so that we would gain this technology for us to evolve, which makes them evolve. Possibly. Wh wh why are they then, if, if we're then, then saying, well, because the atomic bomb went off, then they're like, oh, look at the kids have got matches. Let's go see them. That's a different theory for why they crashed then. Yeah, yeah. It, we I'm not, I'm not exactly following you. Well, look, no, I'm saying if, 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 if when, the, when we had the atomic bomb, mm -hmm. it was like, oh, the kids have got matches. Yes, right. right. If they mm -hmm. came back to see us because of, they've came here to, to, to mm -hmm. observe us, now we've got the matches, that's a different reason for them coming here to sacrifice themselves to give this technology to us. Right. Which one's true? Without the technology, though, you may not be able to control that energy. So it came at that time because that's when it was Could meant be. to come. Right. Could okay. be. I don't know that. No, I'm just no. Go, going brainstorming. Back, no, absolutely. Going back to where the, where the re UFO research, there's many UFO researchers out there, and they've all got their niche, and they, mm -hmm. they, you know, they've all got their own, uh, mm -hmm. own truth. Agenda. Agenda. Their own agenda. That's a, that's a better way of saying it. Mm -hmm. And then you've got, you know, there's so many agendas, and, and then people listening to this will say, well, this is, this is, you know, you and your dad's agenda is this, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So who do they listen to? Is it the discernment inside they listen to? I'm not out. You know, I have the book here because we still get royalties from it, and that's great. Do I need them? No. Uh, does uh, many of the people out there, all you got to do is follow the money on, on every one of the researchers. Follow the money, and you will see if they're telling the truth or not. It's that simple. And most of them, I don't go to the conferences anymore. I go about every four or five years just to see if there's a change. There have been no change. What change would you, would you like to see? Truth. Whose truth? Well, not from them. Not from them. But a, a truth that there is more to our existence than just looking for money, looking for fame, looking for, uh, you know, other things that humans look for. And what I would like to see out here is that, first of all, that my father is truth. Not all of it in here. Some of it's been fantasized. But I'd like to see the truth of what's in that black bag over there that was my father's legacy that has been left. Because I believe without that legacy, the earth might be a different place right now. What if the technology, what if the technology is true in here that's been given? What if it had never been given? Where would we Where be? Where would we be? Would My we father be says 200 years behind. We would not have this conversation. He's 200 years advancement. Or more? Yeah, and they said, can, can we handle it? General Trudeau, my dad never knew the answer. They were afraid of it. They were afraid that technology might be misused. My father would lay there in the hospital dying, and he would tell people, that machine is because of me. They thought my father was delusional, you know? But he's telling the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now to, it hurts me to, to see people go against this, but I understand it. It has to be. Because for the truth to come out, you have to have the other side. There has to be the conflict. The earth is a place of conflict, as we all know, and it has to be there. Is there any earth beings? Very, very, um, I don't know. I don't know. I only ask that because I'm interviewing Corey Good soon, and I'm like... Is there had to be, in my opinion, there had to be a model for the EB. You know, I, Where I, did I that model... I, I would from. think there had to be a model. Right, that's yeah. interesting. That's an interesting answer. Yeah. And we have his I, DNA. We've had it for a long time. Who's DNA? He, oh, yes. Since 1947 yes. or before, even some crashes, we've had his DNA. But we didn't know it was DNA then, did we? No. But now we do. Well, what's happening with that DNA now, I wonder? You can grow them. I know they've been grown, but that's another story. Okay. They're grown right now. We're coming to the end of this interview here. You've mm -hmm. given us more than enough time right now, and I really appreciate it. I certainly. You know, this has been one of my most fascinating interviews recently. What, what last message would you like to give the audience? Have an open mind. Don't believe everything that you hear or see. Uh, most of us strive 
to move forward. But we have to remember one thing. God created us all equal. And the differences between us, every race, is only a fraction. But we strive as human beings to perpetuate that tiny difference. And it ends up in war. It ends up in, in all types of, of uh, conflict. The earth does not have to be a place of conflict. And if you just believe in some of this, not the technology part, not the UFO part, but there are other realms that maybe would like to see us survive. The Drake equation, how many destroy themselves, how many societies. We don't have to destroy ourselves. Take a look at that difference and realize what it is. We all want the same thing. We want our children to grow better than us. And, and could you say, just ending this as well, when, this, when, when we talk about, you've talked about those other realities, but could there be many other realities? I believe and many so. Many other Earths. I believe so. Us doing this in some other form, but the same timeline, but doing it a little bit differently? The ripple. Yep. Yep. If yep. this one goes to hell, it affects the others. So what we and that's what the atomic explosions we were talking about a minute ago. The if they take place in partially the energy in another dimension, the ripple. And what does that energy do to other dimensions that don't? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. it changes things, right? Yeah. Well, look, Phil. Thank you so much. Oh, you're very welcome. You bent my mind a little bit, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy. It, it, it's not easy, and you can easily trick yourself into believing things that aren't true. I understand that perpetual liars, you know, and such like that. But it does hurt me that some of these people out there can't come down to earth and realize that it is, in my opinion, a benevolent universe. Thank you. You're very welcome. Come again.